What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and today we're gonna be unboxing the new M2 iPad Air for 2024 in both 11 inch and in 13 inch sizes. So we got the purple and the blue. So let's start with the 11 inch model. And this is the base model, the entry level iPad Air at 128 gigabytes. So that is new up from 64 gigabytes as the base storage on the M1 iPad Air from 2022. So I got this one in the purple color and it is also Wi-Fi only. This is gonna run you $5.99 and if you want to add cellular, you can do that for an extra $150. And aside from the purple and the blue color, it does also come in starlight and space gray. So that is nice if you want the more traditional colors, but I went with the more fun colors this time. So let's go ahead and unbox this 11 inch model. Easy pull tabs as always on Apple products. There we go. Let's see what the purple looks like. Here we go. So we have our paper on top as usual. Before we take a look at that, let's see what else is inside of the box. So we have our pamphlet of papers here. And if you watch my iPad Pro unboxing video, you would know no Apple stickers. So Apple did not ship any Apple stickers with the iPad Air or the iPad Pro, which may be the new trend that Apple heads in, unfortunately, if you are a collector like me. So anyways, we have the braided USB-C to USB-C cable. It is not color matching. It is the traditional silver or gray color. And then we also have a 20 watt USB-C adapter to plug in to the wall. So pretty standard stuff. Let's go ahead and take a look at this new purple color. And man, I can already tell I love this color. It's very muted. It's not super saturated like the iPad 10 colors are. But here is what that purple iPad Air looks like. I like it. I dig it. And my first impressions of this, especially compared to the iPad Pro, are that this thing is thick and heavy. I mean, the iPad Pro here is thinner and also more lightweight than the iPad Air, which just doesn't make any sense, you know, based on the history of iPads and just the naming scheme, but that's where we're at right now. So the iPad Air is 6.1 millimeters thin, so or thick, however you want to look at it. And it also weighs 1.02 pounds. So the iPad Pro weighs 0.98 pounds for the 11 inch. So just over a pound and 6.1 millimeters thick. And that's going to be the same thickness for the 13 inch model as well, which we'll see here in a moment. So since there's not a big difference between these two, let's go ahead and unbox the 13 inch as well. And then we'll talk about the differences in terms of size and overall features between the 11 inch and 13 inch iPad Air, because there are a couple of minor differences. So you can see I got the base again, 128 gigabyte model for the 13 inch. And this is going to run you 799. So 799 for the 13 inch, 599 for the 11 inch. And this is Wi-Fi only as well. And I got this in the blue color. So it's going to take off these peel tabs. And now let's check out what that blue looks like. And inside you can see everything is the same, the same cord and the same AC outlet. So let's take a look at that blue color. And again, this is just a very light, like pastel-y color. So let's go ahead and take the paper off here. So here is what the blue and purple look like together. So the blue kind of looks like a gray in certain lighting. So if you have like lighting directly on it, it's going to look very silver or maybe like a like a gray color, like a very light gray color. Whereas the purple, it, it stays looking purple. You know, it, it does kind of also look silver in certain lightings. So it's hard to tell, you know, under studio lights. So I can actually show you. Let me turn these lights off real quick and you can see how it looks maybe in you know your living room or when you're just around in your house you can see how they you can still tell that both of them are you know blue and purple especially right here you can see the purple really shines when it's darker but that's just a little bit of a color comparison between the purple and the blue you can see the top as well the borders always stand out with these colorful apple products and there is a look at the side you can see the the blue and the purple around the camera bump as well and then also down here at the bottom you can see kind of the color comparison there it's not very obvious on the bottom with the lighting hitting it the way that it is but everything else looks the same you can see kind of a size comparison here between the 11 inch and the 13 inch so we're going to boot up both of these ipad airs and set them up at the same time and take a look at the display differences the speaker differences and just the overall display size differences because this is the first time that we're seeing a 13 inch 
iPad Air. And if you look closely, we have a new landscape camera on both the 11 inch and the 13 inch iPad Air. So now you have a landscape camera, which means that you also have center stage on the iPad Air, which just keeps you in frame when you're on a web call or a FaceTime call. So that's gonna be much more convenient because most people have their iPad sitting in you know, landscape mode as opposed to portrait mode. So let's go ahead and set these up. All right, so we're gonna do this as English on both. We'll go United States, and here's where you can change the appearance. So if you want it to be medium or large size in terms of the text and icons, you can have that set there. But I would recommend default, especially on the 11 inch. You might wanna go bigger on the 13 inch because you have more of a display to deal with but i went with normal and now we have the quick start guide so if you have your phone nearby you might get a pop-up to basically set up this ipad without having to go through the process manually which is really nice i'm just going to go through without another device for this tutorial we're going to connect to our wi-fi and then we have a fresh software update so fresh out of the box we have a software update for the ipad air this is going to be ipad os 17.5 so i would highly recommend that everybody update right away but i'm going to update later just for the sake of this video now we have our data and privacy screen which we will just continue on and now you have the option to set up for a child in your family or if you want to set it up for yourself you can just go ahead and set up for yourself and now we get the option for touch id so we have touch id on the lock screen button on the top button, which is going to be just like what we saw on the previous generation iPad Air. So I'm gonna take the 11 inch here and set up Touch ID. So since I'm always gonna be in this orientation, most likely I'm going to use my left index finger, not my dominant right hand for this. And that is something I did on the previous generation and it worked out well for me. You can always add other fingers as well, but you kind of just need to you know, tap up and down on the button right here. Make sure to keep doing that until it gets your finger, kind of like Face ID on your phone. You know, obviously a lot of people had Touch ID phones back in the day as well. We all did, but uh, a lot of people forgot about that. So anyway, capture all your fingerprint. So we're gonna have to do another scan here of our fingerprints on this Touch ID button. So there we go, it's done. And now it asks you if you want to add another fingerprint, if you want to switch it around and do that, I would recommend doing at least two fingerprints, one on each hand, but we're gonna set that up later in settings. And now it's asking us to create an iPad passcode. So we're just gonna go to passcode options and we're going to select a four digits. We're just gonna do a four digit. We'll just do all zeros, which obviously you do not want to do unless you're, you know, never leave your house and it only stays in your house, but we're gonna use that anyways. And we're going to confirm our four zeros as our our passcode just for the sake of this video and now you have the option to transfer your apps and data so if you didn't transfer everything over earlier now you get the chance to transfer from an iCloud backup from another iPad or if you have an Android device like a Galaxy tab you can transfer everything over from there but we're gonna set up and just do it from scratch and here's where you want to sign in to your Apple ID I'm just gonna sign in on one of these and now we have our terms and conditions to agree to so we'll just go ahead and agree to that right there so while we're waiting on the 13 inch to sign in, we're just gonna go through the rest of the setup process on the 11 inch. So we have the option to update your iPad automatically. So if you want software updates to update automatically without you doing it manually, you can set that up and just tap continue if you want that. But I want to download automatically and not install automatically. So now we have location services. I would recommend turning that on. And now you have the option to set up Hey S. So if you want to set up Siri and with the Hey trigger, you can set that up right there. I personally do not use that very often on my iPad. So I'm going to skip this and set up later in settings. Now you have the option for screen time. So if you want a weekly report of your screen time and if you want to be able to monitor that, I would recommend just tapping on continue or you can set that up later in settings. I like screen time, so we'll set that up now. And then you have iPad analytics. So if you wanna share the analytics with Apple, you can do that right there. I'll just go ahead and share. Same with app analytics. If you wanna share data with app developers to help improve the applications, you can do that as well. Now we have the option to do either light or dark mode for the interface, or you could have it set to auto, which means it is light mode during sunrise, like after sunrise, and when the sun sets, it goes to dark mode. So I like that, I'm gonna keep that on auto. And there we go, perfect timing, get started, and we're now on the home screen for the 11 inch iPad Air. And if you want to improve Siri and dictation, you can share your audio recordings. I select not now for that one, and there we go. We are now on the home screen of the 13 inch. And you can see instantly the difference between the home screen even of the 13 inch 
inch and the 11 inch iPad Air. So a pretty big difference. You can fit a lot more over here on the 13 inch. You can just see a lot more obviously than you can on the 11 inch. And as far as the processor inside, we have the M2 chip on the 13 inch and the 11 inch iPad Air. And this is gonna be about 50% faster than the M1 Air when combined with the faster memory bandwidth that this has. Now it's also gonna be three times faster than the A12 iPad Air, which a lot of you are likely looking to upgrade from. So as far as battery life though, it's gonna be the same as M2. We do also have Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3, which is big for the iPad Air. That's gonna help Wi-Fi speeds and also Bluetooth connectivity and also speeds with Bluetooth. And in terms of speakers and audio, these are both going to have dual studio quality microphones. So the microphone quality is gonna be pretty good. And they also both have landscape stereo speakers. However, the 13 inch is going to have better sound quality because it has double the base of the 11 inch. And I'm just gonna turn the speakers up all the way because I think I can already tell a difference in the speaker quality so here's the 11 inch i'm not sure if this is going to go through on camera but yeah the 13 inch just sounds a lot more refined and just more professional i don't know how to put it but the speakers definitely sound better on the 13 inch and it's not even related to the bass just the overall quality sounds more polished and refined it sounds more like an ipad pro here on the 13 inch compared to the 11 inch so that will definitely translate over into videos as well so i just want to listen to a quick video here on youtube to see if we can hear a difference in the speaker quality Okay, so the 11 inch definitely has better treble, I would say, like better highs, but the overall sound quality and especially the lows and the bass is way better on the 13 inch iPad Air. So it's a noticeable difference, but I think that if you're listening to podcasts and things like that, then the 11 inch is gonna sound just fine. There's really no downside to the 11 inch speakers. I'd say it's only for like movies and things with a lot of bass. And by the way, since we have that front facing camera on the landscape side now, it's in the landscape orientation, that's gonna make center stage a lot better as well. So we do have center stage here on the iPad Air, just like we had on the iPad Air 5 but you can see it just keeps you centered in the screen you know in the frame even when you move from side to side it's going to recenter you in the frame which is really nice it's a little too close for me but that's it's really nice in video calls and facetimes and things like that so it's definitely nice to have it here in the landscape view because it is a lot more you know accurate and it can see a lot more of your surroundings than when it was right here so that's great as well and that's a big benefit of having that landscape uh, front facing camera, just like we had on the iPad 10th gen. And then as far as the display we're looking at here, this is going to be the liquid retina display. So this is still an LCD display. So of course it's not going to be OLED like the iPad pro. That's how Apple is able to keep this at 599 starting for the 11 inch model. However, we do have the P3 wide color gamut. We have true tone and also the anti-reflective coating, which it doesn't do great at reflect, you know, anti-reflection as you can see there, but that is what Apple claims. And by the way, the software version that we're on on both of these is going to be iPad OS 17.4 with a build number of 21E8237. So I do also want to run a Geekbench test here. So this is going to be on the 13 inch iPad Air base model, which you can see has eight gigabytes of RAM. And as we're running that Geekbench test, I do also want to show you the Apple Pencil Pro on the new iPad Air. So this is the new Apple Pencil Pro, which was also just released today. And this new iPad Pro or this new Apple Pencil Pro is only compatible with the new iPad Pro and the new iPad Air. So you can see we do have some new features here as well. So you have the squeeze feature, you have, you know, all these other features that shows right here. So it asks us to try squeeze. So the new Apple Pencil has haptic features 
feedback built in. So now when you squeeze, you will feel that haptic feedback, which feels really good. And it allows you to choose some of your tools without reaching all the way across the screen to do it. It makes it a lot more convenient. And now we also have Find My. So it's going to add the Apple Pencil Pro to our Find My so we can track it, which is nice. And so here we are inside of Freeform. I just want to show you some of these features really quickly. So we do have the barrel feature. So if you go to a certain brush, so we're going to pinch in right here. So once you like kind of press in right here, you feel that haptic feedback and you can see it pulls up that menu wherever you're at on the screen. So it knows where you're at anywhere you go and it kind of just puts that menu there where you're at which is awesome so we're going to select a new brush here and what's really cool is that since we have a gyroscope built in you can see that when you twist and turn the apple pencil the little hover preview there shows the orientation that we're holding our pencil if we want to do the little barrel roll to change like the way that we draw things which is just awesome especially for artists so anyways here is the score for the geekbench test so we scored a 25 84 on the single core and an 82 11 on the multi-core now in terms of an overall size comparison between the 13 inch and the 11 inch ipad air i would say that if you're somebody who likes to take notes a lot like if you're a student and you need to take notes i would highly recommend the 11 inch over the 13 inch the 13 inch just gets too big for things like writing in my opinion or if you like to read books a lot I still think the 11 inch is best for that if you're just on the go more I mean both of these are pretty heavy I mean they're not super heavy that's still an iPad Air the new iPad Pro just makes these feel heavier than they actually are but uh, the 11 inch is obviously going to be better for portability and if you're just always on the go but I think the 13 inch is a great addition for the iPad Air for somebody who may not be able to you know afford or may not want all the fancy bells and whistles that the iPad Pro has, but they want that bigger display. I think the 13 inch iPad Air is perfect for those people. And I would say that if you're a big gamer or if you like to watch a lot of movies or TV shows, then the 13 inch is going to be the best bet for that as well. I mean, the 11 inch is good, but you're not going to beat the real estate that you get from the 13 inch. And I have yet to determine which one of these I will be keeping. I am going to be using both of these for the next couple of weeks to see which one I actually want to keep. Because at this point in time, I do not know if I want the 11 inch or if I want the 13 inch iPad Air, because I think I'm leaning toward the 11 inch for the iPad Pro so maybe I want the 13 inch for the iPad Air who knows I will be doing a lot of testing and I will bring you more videos and my overall decision as well when I make that decision later on on the channel so make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on that but anyways that was my quick unboxing and overview detailed overview about the new iPad Air so hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one